we're joined now by Dermot O'Brien of the Beef Plan Movement. Dermot, thanks very much for dropping into us. Sure. Dermot, um, it's actually exactly a year ago at the Ploughing Championships 2018 where the Beef Plan Movement held its very first meeting. In the 12 months that have, have passed, when you reflect on it, how would you sum it up? Well, first of all, we would have to say that you know it has been a phenomenal success. Um, the farmers throughout this country, in particular the beef farmers that we represent, have given huge support all round. Um, it has gained momentum, and I think farmers find that you know that you know by standing together and believing in what we believe in, that we have achieved together. So, you know, I suppose. 12 months is, is, passes very quickly, um, you know, f farmers felt that, um, that they didn't have a, a voice uh, and now, they, now that they do, I think this, this movement is going to grow from strength to strength. There was a vacuum there, is that what you're saying? I feel that there was, yes, and uh, I'm an agricultural consultant by profession and I could see from my own client base that, you know, they weren't getting paid for for what they were doing. Uh, a lot of farms were, were not sustainable. So, you know, something had to be done. Um, a number of like-minded people came together to form this organization. It was born of the, the frustration that farmers felt, uh, you know, that, that you know, their, their fam they were not able to sustain their families and, and their farms. And, you know, now, uh, going forward, like, I think that we are going to build on this we will represent farmers in the best way that we can. And I think that this movement will go from strength to strength because we have pillar, um, we have pillar issues such as setting up uh, producer organizations, uh, setting up purchasing groups, and uh, you know, stakeholder accountability has been a major thing, okay? So we've, we've achieved all that over the last, over the last uh, 12 months. How do you think the industry and the government politics, how have they responded to you? Well, initially, we, we found it very difficult to break through. Uh, a new organization, um, you know, it takes time. We, we believe that it took time to, to, to gain that recognition. But during the course of the year, we had a series of protests. Um, and I suppose the most recent protest was a 12-day peaceful protest outside meat processors. So. We gained recognition to that very process, and we, I, 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 we feel proud of that, that we are now officially recognized as a farm organization. So politically, we, we have gained traction, and we are respected now among all, among, across all uh, political denominations. And what about publicly? Yes, publicly. Well, I suppose recently we've had the demise of legal threats uh, hanging over us. Uh, after the 12-day protest, that created um, a little bit of a void uh, because sometimes farmers feel that uh, if, 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 if they don't have representation or that they're not uh, able to interact with, with an organisation, they feel let down. But, you know, funnily enough, that hasn't been the case because farmers know that we represent them when it comes to, to, to genuine um, issues. So, you know, we, we, we feel that we feel that we've made we've made great ground. So going forward, I think we will we will continue to do so. Dermot, eight weeks ago, the beef plan movement started protests. Um, they started. They stopped other protests set, set up. There was multiple cases of, of legal action being taken against uh, the, beef, the beef plan movement against individual farmers. Uh, on the industry side, there was layoffs, there was huge problems, um, slaughtering problems, um, huge concern about contracts and supply chains. Yet last weekend, um, all the stakeholders, including yourselves, came around a table and you agreed, after a second round of talks, have, uh, there is an agreement on the table now for the future of the beef sector. Are you happy with what's in that agreement? Do you, does that satisfy? It's been a few days now. Are your members satisfied? I know the pickets are coming down. I'll get to that in a second. But just on the agreement, on what's in the agreement, 
are you satisfied with what's in the agreement? Absolutely, because you know, six months ago or six years ago, or you know, some t even very recently, farmers didn't have that type of agreement available to them. So now we have an agreement which which ameliorates each beef farmer situation in this country. So you know, there's additional bonuses for for under 30 months. There's additional bonus for for over 30 months. So now if your animal exceeds a 30 month upper age limit, they get 8 cents per kilo, which was not available before. We have a beef task force being set up with a member of each farming organization aboard that task force. This is also a very positive development. Uh, you know, any future impasses that will be there, we will be able to discuss it to this task force. So this is positive. Okay, we have an independent examination into, into the supply chain, where the money goes from primary producer to meat processor to traders and the retailer. So we now have a facility available to us that we can examine all the different uh, pathways where the money goes along that, that supply chain. So that's very important and farmers will respect that as an achievement. There are various other positives in, in that agreement. Now, most farmers may not feel that this is enough because the first thing that a farmer will want is a, a fair price for their produce. Now, we gave a commitment to the minister that we would go to picket lines to advise farmers of what was in this agreement. It is positive. It's, it's not everything that they want, but it is a starting point. So once you have a starting point, you know, you can go along a little further along the journey. So price, the one thing that we could not discuss during negotiations was price. On, a, on an individual basis, we can't discuss that. The competition authority prevents us from doing so. The minister could not discuss it. So now, going forward, we will have a facility available to us called a producer organization. And farmers on picket lines need to understand that this vehicle is available to them so that they can collectively negotiate price with meat processors going forward. So this is also positive. But the farmers that are on picket lines this minute, they, they, they feel reluctant to stand down because there is a lack of trust between processor and farmer. But we will assure them that this producer organization is the way forward. The industry, though, at the same time, has said that this agreement will not come into force until all the pickets um, stand down. Yes. And I suppose the beef plan movement, uh, there was uh, another story yesterday where the beef plan movement has been issued with fresh legal, um, fresh legal action. Um, the timing of that, I suppose, has, is that affecting yeah. your work on the pickets to try and uh, get those individual farmer protests to, yeah. to stand down? Like dealing with the protests ha have been difficult, okay? Uh, psychologically it has been draining, uh, physically it has been draining because we're away from our farms, we're away from our business and we're away from our families. So to, to reach an, an agreement after 30 hours of dialogue uh, to commit to going to picket lines to advise farmers to, to try and stand down protests. And for our chairman, who gave his blood, sweat and tears to defend the farmers of this country and to, to go to a picket line and for the whole thing to be lost in translation by a meat processor to carry out the act of issuing further legal threats, this is totally unacceptable. This is bad taste. It is, it is not... Um, it is not good, and, and it, it, it kind of sends a message that meat processors maybe, maybe may not want uh, the agreement to succeed. Uh, even though I have spoke to meat processors in the last couple of days, uh, representatives from those individual processing groups, and they wanted the agreement to, su to succeed. They're nervous about our contracts, but like we we want the agreement to succeed, but additional legal threat is not the way to go. Certainly not. As it stands, around three of the protests have stood down over the last 24 hours or so. Um, is it the beginning of the end that we're seeing here in terms of the protests? And um, are you confident that uh, the agreement will be seen through? Well, I, on a personal level, along with my colleagues in Beef Plan, we have endeavoured at length 
over the past 24, 48 hours um, to communicate and to interact with these picket lines. That not always the safest place to go. Okay, you you were dealing with farmers and, and non-farmers alike, supporters of of, of farmers. We they they the composition of these picket lines are you know, under different umbrellas, different farm organisations. So we are endeavouring, along with other farm organisations, to stand these protests down because it is a condition for the agreement to progress. And likewise, the, the processors have agreed at the talks so that they will officially withdraw all legal threats. So to, in order to move forward, the compromise here is protests to stand down, legal threats to be abolished and removed, and then we can, we can implement the agreement. And hopefully in the meantime, uh, the producer organisation will, will, will work alongside that. Is there a deadline on that, Dermot, in terms of how long, this ca how long it may take for the protests to possibly all stand down? Is there a deadline on that in terms of the Look, agreement we, 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 would, we would certainly have hoped that the protests would have stood on by now. It's proving difficult because you have to interpret what price, negotiation and price actually means. For some farmers to, to, to accept that it is difficult because they're trying to pay bills, they're trying to cover costs, they're trying to cover the cost of production. So our protest is going to stand down. We're going to endeavour to have everything under control certainly within 48 hours. It's going to be very difficult. We want to achieve it. We have been in touch with the Minister's office we have achieved the first stand down, which is one. Now we hopefully have three, and hopefully all will have stood down, hopefully in the next 48 hours. It's a, it's, but a it's price a big, increase a big, would, would really. Yeah, it's a big ask. The it's a big ask because farmers are now resilient, they're entrenched. A price increase certainly would be an incentive to, because farmers are tired, they want to go home. But an incentive on price, yes, would certainly take them off the line. Okay, Dermot, thank you very much for coming into us. We'll be watching this story very closely over the coming days. Thank you, thank you very much. And we'll be back shortly.